Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Audacity tutorial. I'm Josh Meyer of joshmeyervo.com. I'm a professional voice talent. I've done over 3,000 paid voiceovers. I got into that through writing music, and I just so happen to be an expert in Audacity. Before we even start today, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody for all of your love and support. Uh, we've crossed 10,000 subscribers. We're hundreds of thousands of views later, and... You know, I started this channel to help people who want to learn, grow, and better themselves for their voiceover, their podcast, you know, audiobook narration, music, you name it. I wanted to provide free, valuable, solid, and sound information. And it truly is my pleasure serving you. Stay tuned, like, subscribe. I am not going anywhere. I have a wealth a free valuable information coming your way. So I've been crazy busy helping people, you know, in their private personal projects, podcasts, voiceover music, all that stuff, audiobooks, and creating a ton of custom EQs. But stay tuned because I have a wealth of free valuable information coming your way. I've got an EQ course dropping as usual. I will have free EQs for download in the description with instructions on how to upload that or import that into your own Audacity. But today, catch your breath, Josh, take it easy. Today, we are going to talk about taking multiple steps that we would normally have to click, I don't know, eight, 10 times, you know, effect, EQ, effect, compression, effect, normalization, effect, loudness normalization, limiter, noise gate, whatever your processing chain may be, we can take all of those steps and automate it, save you even more time. And if you're looking to save more time, check out some of my other videos, tips on using your hotkeys and becoming savvy with all that stuff. But today's topic is macros, my friend. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to start that over because I hate... I very, I very strongly dislike when I've got a sound wave just kind of floating halfway in. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm creating a random recording. And we could pretend that this is your chapter for your audiobook. This is your podcast. This is your 30-second commercial. This is maybe vocals for music. But if you're doing vocals for music, you know, maybe you have the same exact processing chain every time. But vocals for music kind of require a bit more TLC. Now, with voiceover, you know, podcast, it's a different story. Let's just say we have 30 seconds exactly. We could also pretend that this is uh, 30 minutes, you know, and you have your own processing chain for a chapter of an audiobook or your podcast, um, or this is your 30 second voiceover. I'm going to create a duplicate of this track. Now, what we would normally do, like, let's just first scenario let's run through a typical audio processing chain eq compression normalization so what would we do we would go to effect we'd either go to graphic eq or filter curve right here is the male eq that i i created a general male eq um that is for sure to sound much better than uh, the vast majority of other stuff that you'll see out there but uh so eq step one step two Let's say compression. And just so you know, kind of an easy, this is a very easy setting, right? That is not going to destroy your audio. Now, if you're looking to kind of dial in your compression settings specifically to what you're doing, feel free to check out my last video where I show you how compression can work for you and how to use it to your benefit. But just to be safe, anywhere on the threshold between 10 and 20 dBs, safe. Ratio 2 to 1, anywhere from 2 to 1 to 4 to 1, very safe. Um, so compression, we'll apply that. That's step two. And we'll zoom out just so we can see the whole picture here. And step three, let's just say it was normalized. Now, I, I see a couple spikes there that I might change, and, and maybe I would throw a limiter, but we won't worry about that right now. Let's just say filter curve. Uh, compressor and normalization and we will normalize that to negative three okay normalize so what we did there is we effect find click 
effect, find, click, effect, find, click. What we can really do is we can go to tools, go to macros, and we will click new. We're going to take all of those steps and just put them into one automated process. So let's say, okay, we're going to create a new macro. This is for my people. Y'all are my people. What can I say? All right. So step one is going to be the mail EQ. Now, before we even do this, I want you to make sure that whatever steps you're about to put into the macro are in fact showing up every time that you click on that effect. For instance, since we applied the mail EQ prior, it should show up every single time unless we change that. So bam, mail EQ, yes. Uh, the compression settings that we put in last time, are these the settings that we want to be a part of our macro? Yes, great, whatever. And normalization, do we want to normalize to negative three? We just want to make sure that when we click on these, they are showing up as to the way that we would like them. So we will go back to the tools here. We'll go to macros and, you know, just for the sake of doing this whole thing, start to finish, it's going to be for my people. Okay. And step one, we're going to now insert step one. So it's got a sideways slider and we are going to find filter curve. So I'm going to slide over and boom, filter curve. Now it's going to show all these crazy coordinates, but if the curve that you wanted showed up last time, this is going to be the correct one. Step two was our compression. So we will go to compressor and okay. And then step three is going to be the normalization. So we'll slide over, find the ends, ends, normalize, pow. Ooh, we normalize. Okay, click OK, and then click OK right here at the bottom. Boom. So instead of going to effect every time, we could just go to tools, apply macro, click on our for my people macro. And just like that, it did everything for us in one shot. And even if you had a crazy processing chain, undo, such as... Um, let's say you had something along the lines of, okay, you're doing, um, you're doing loudness normalization. You're doing filter curve. You are doing limiter, limiter. You're doing your limiter. You're doing a noise gate, you know, just for example's sake. Boom. So instead of doing all that, we could just put it into this process. We go to tools, go to macros, we would click new, and this is going to be for my people, part two, boom. Okay, so step one was loudness normalization. We'll go to the slider, find the L's, loudness normalization, okay. And once again, like I said, as, as long as the setting popped up last time you clicked on it that you want, then it will be that when you insert it. Okay, so step two, let's go to filter curve. And this will work if you have two steps, three steps, 10 steps, it doesn't matter. So filter curve, boom. Okay, and then we had limiter. Find the L's, limiter, okay. And then we had noise gate. Find the ends, noise gate, bada bing, bada bang. And then we will click okay. So instead of, okay, effect this, effect that, effect this, all that stuff, we go to tools, apply macro, for my people too. All in one shot, automation, baby. You gotta love that, right? Um, so. That is exactly how you can take your processing chain, automate it, save you even more time. Don't break your arm running back and forth across the screen. Um, it's why not? You know, if you have a process that you use over and over again, you know, 
especially if it's for your podcast or, you know, or your voiceover and, and you use the same compression settings, the same EQ, um, why would you not automate it? So this is a fantastic tool for you. I want to talk about using, um, I want to talk about using, what am I, what am I talking about? Uh, noise reduction in macros. There we go. Sorry about that. So noise reduction in macros, I would encourage you to just take that extra step to get your no, your noise profile at that time and apply noise reduction separately. And the reason being is because you may have some recordings where your computer fan is off, some recordings where your computer fan is on, thus making your noise profile different. And, you know, the way it would scrub the background would be different. Uh, sometimes your AC may be on and sometimes it may be off. Sometimes both your fan and your AC may be on and sometimes neither of them are. So those factors will all affect the noise profile of noise reduction. So unless you have a room and you don't have a computer fan or AC and it's going to sound the same every single time, by all means. But if you have small variables that could adjust the noise profile, then I'd encourage you to just do that separately on its own, nice and easy. Um, maybe your noise gate already takes care of that. Who knows? Everybody's situation is different. But that concludes today's video. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for help with your, your private projects, feel free to reach out. Custom EQs, feel free to reach out. And keep your eyes peeled for the up and coming how to create your own EQs course. And I make this thing so easy that you guys will be able to make your own EQs for so many different things forever. And it's going to be out of steel. But ladies and gentlemen, lastly, thank you so much. 10,000 subscribers and counting hundreds of thousands of views, and it has truly been my pleasure serving you. So until next time, stay safe, stay positive. I got your back.